Hey everyone, this is Martin from Tech Altar, and if Oppo had a relationship with software updates, their status on Facebook would be, it's complicated. They are usually one of the last to catch up with the major Android versions, and their software skin is often criticized to be too far away from the stock Android experience. There are signs, however, that things might be going into the right direction. This is a stock Android build, built by Oppo for the Find 7, 7a. Well, that is something quite unexpected. Now, the topic is actually pretty big, so I decided to make two separate videos about it. The first one, the one that you're watching right now, will explain to you what's good about this update, what's bad about it, and why it exists even to begin with. And then the second one will basically be a tutorial on how to install this update on your phone. So if you want to see that, subscribe to my channel, because it's coming later. All right, let's start with explaining what Oppo is doing here. International Car OS has so far been a port of the Chinese Color OS with a few small changes added to it. You know, an Android system built by Chinese people for Chinese people in a country where Google basically doesn't even exist on phones. As expected, this system clearly didn't live up to the expectations of many international customers, especially because of the slow Android version updates, which was made painfully clear by how long it took for KitKat to arrive. Very, very long. To combat this problem, Oppo is trying out a new direction with stock Lollipop Android to see if customers like it, and here's what I think of their first public release. There actually aren't a lot of visual details I can show in the system since it's very basic for now. There are a few OPPO wallpapers included out of the box to make them seem more familiar, but it is practically just stock Lollipop with no visual modifications. And that's probably a good thing as Lollipop is pretty. You know, if it ain't broken, don't try to fix it. Uh, you will get bold colors and funky animations in every part of the system, and it looks really pretty on the screen. A good example of Lollipop is, of course, the multitasking display, which looks just great. One clear visual change from Oppo's ROMs will be the on-screen keys you can see right here, but thankfully you can turn them off to use hardware keys if you prefer those. Hooray for giving us the choice! Performance has been great so far, everything is fluid and smooth, just like you'd expect from a stock Android build. Functionality 2 is basically just what you'd get on stock Lollipop, so you have your lock screen notifications, a built-in power saving mode, the ability to bypass security codes when being connected to a trusted Bluetooth device, and so on. Battery life on my device has sadly been poor so far, as Google services keep draining my phone. That might just be because I'm in China though, where Google is having trouble doing its thing, as other international users aren't reporting such issues yet. Regardless, this area should improve with continued development, and is eventually expected to be noticeably better than the fairly heavy color OS. If you want to follow up with the progress, you can follow me on Google Plus and Facebook, where I will share my stats. Okay, so of course stock Android is all great, but what makes this build any better than all the custom ROMs out there? What are the selling points here, right? First of all is the fact that this version was built for the Find 7 from the ground up by a group of dedicated developers instead of porting some other generic custom ROM to the phone. This should in theory lead to greater performance and stability in the future, though for now this is only a promise. Even more important is the convenience of installing this ROM on your phone since it can be installed straight from the newest Oppo recovery. I'll go into details about the process in the upcoming video, so if you're interested in that, subscribe to my channel. But the process is very easy. In an ideal case, you just have to download the file, enter recovery mode and hit install. Being able to use an Oppo recovery to go back and forth between colorless versions and stock Android versions is a great addition. Unlike with custom ROMs, this build is actually Google certified too, so you won't have to manually look for and install Google apps either, they're already part of the package. Another convenience of this ROM is that it supports unified storage using the LVM method. What this means is that you will be able to install the ROM on your phone both with and without unified storage, and you won't have to play around with changing the partitions first and erasing all of your data from your phone before flashing. Not bad. What will make or break this ROM is of course how seriously Oppo is taking its development, and sadly, no one can be sure of that just now. I can't see it replacing ColorOS in the near future, but will it get timely updates? Will it receive cool new features? We're waiting for other extra features to make this ROM better, and I know I have a list of things that I would like to see, which goes like this. Having the Oppo Backup and Restore app running on this ROM would make the change between ColorOS and stock Android even easier, so I hope that will arrive later. Screen off gestures, especially double tap to wake, are something I really liked on ColorOS, and the new awesome ColorOS camera app and Max Audio were great additions too, so I really hope that Oppo will find a way to implement these features to the stock Android ROM as well. An easy way to root the device wouldn't hurt either. 
I personally believe that whether all of those things happen or not depends very much on how popular this first ROM proves to be. So if you like this direction, go ahead and give the ROM a try, report any bugs, and tell Oppo on the forums that you really want them to keep moving into this direction in the future. Now, this ROM is actually kind of confusing to me. It is not going to replace ColorOS, and it has a pretty uncertain future. Still, it works pretty well, so if you're the adventurous type and have a fine 7 and 7a, give it a try. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to see how well that works. It should be fairly easy and it should come very soon. And like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it was terrible and you absolutely want to make me cry. And follow me on Google Plus and Facebook, and I'll see you in the next one.